Welcome back to The Daily Grind, everyone. So today we're gonna to be planting some cruciferous veggies, which are gonna be broccoli, cabbage, and cauliflower in this bed here. So there's my seedlings, and they're about a month old, month and a half, roughly. Today is gonna to be 71 degrees, and the rest of the week is gonna be in the 60s, with the night temperatures not dropping below 40, which is perfect. 40 to 60 is really kind of where these wanna be. You don't want them to get too cold. Now they can handle a little bit of frost if you cover them, but they'll bolt quicker if you have a lot of frost. So that's something we want to avoid. I've got some fertilizer here to kind of give them a good kickstart. Uh, this is organic granule fertilizer. It doesn't really actually work for a week or two until it starts getting broken down by that soil biome, but it'll be good to add underneath each planting. And another thing I have here is leek that I'm gonna be planting. So I've got some baby leeks. I've also got leeks lined up in a row here. And most alliums, which is which leek is in the allium family, help to deter pests. So I'm hoping that that will kind of assist since we did have, last time I planted cabbage and broccoli, we did have a problem with a lot of pests. Let's get to this and start planting. Now, another thing is I've got the sun coming in from this direction. So right over here, the sun kind of comes up this way in the winter here, you can see the sun's right there, right? And so I don't want anything too tall on this side to block the light of that side. And broccoli tends to grow a little higher than cabbage. So I'm gonna start the cabbage on this side. Let's start with the smallest cabbage, that's the ball head cabbage. And unfortunately I had some frost damage here with this one, we'll see if it makes it. But we are gonna do about 18 inches away. That's a little less, but this is leek, it's not cabbage, so it should be okay. I think this is where I'm gonna actually place it. So I've got a lot of mulch in here, and now I'm into the soil. So I'm gonna dig a little hole. That's where I'm gonna plant this one. This is a four foot bed. And so if I'm kinda on the edge here, these are every nine to 12 inches, so that's every foot. So I can get another one right in the center and then another one. Now I've gone over this many times before. This is kind of what I do with most of the plants, different ratios of each for the different type of plant. You're growing green growth, right? So you want some nitrogen. You want a fair amount of nitrogen. Being new, I want those roots to really take hold. That's why I've got bone meal. So this is a five, seven, three. This would be nitrogen. This would be phosphorus and this would be potassium. Okay, phosphorus is really good for root development. Potassium is really good for overall vigor of the plant. Okay, and then I've got some added bone meal, which is all phosphorus, and phosphorus is good for root growth. So I'm gonna add that. Of course, I definitely wanna add a lot of nitrogen, and that's where the blood meal is coming in to play. Another thing I just got, because it was on discount, is this earthworm casting. So I think we're gonna add that. And this is mostly nitrogen, but it's only 0.5. I mean, it's not adding much. What it is, is adding a whole bunch of other micronutrients to the soil. Um, earthworm castings are just really good overall for the soil. Now, I do have worms that I am actually vermicomposting right now, which is adding stuff into a worm bin. And I am creating my own, but I don't have it quite ready yet. And since this was discounted, I figured I'd pick it up. So we're just grabbing a handful and sprinkling a handful in. Again, this isn't a lot of macronutrients, so it's not gonna burn the plants. And I'm just adding a handful for each. It might not do a lot, but a little bit helps, every little bit. Next, I'm gonna do this happy frog. It's just an organic fertilizer, and same thing. And I'm doing just about a half of a handful in each hole, and then blood meal. Blood meal is gonna be the nitrogen. Now, I don't wanna go too much with this, so About a, not a full handful, and I'm just kind of, you know, a little sprinkle, not a whole lot. Again, this is a lot more nitrogen. And starting off, I want them to be focused on more root development. So that's where the bone meal comes in. And I'm going to add quite a bit, in fact. So about a half a handful per hole. So this is a ball head, Danish ball head cabbage. So I'm gonna backfill a little bit of that soil. 
then we want to press this in to make sure there's good soil contact. All right. Make sure some of that soil is up around that. And then we can fill back with some mulch. Make sure this is nice and mulched because mulch is going to add a lot of water retention, which is what we want. It'll keep this from drying out, especially as new seedlings. All right, we're doing the same thing with this. We're going to mix that into the soil so it's not just sitting right on it. Place that in, make sure the soil is coming up and around it, and then replace the mulch back on top. That row is planted. Let's move on to the next. And by the way, I always put these little tags on it with the spacing when I plant the seeds to ensure that I know exactly how far apart these should be so I don't have to go back to the packet and look. And this says 18 to 24 inches, so let's do 18. This is an exact measurement, but there's, six, uh, there's eight, there's 16. So we'll put it on this side of this strip line. Place my marker. Let's get those holes. Copenhagen, market cabbage. Replace that mulch back on top, like so. So now is the broccoli. And I forgot to put the marker in. The broccoli seemed to do the worst when it came to the frost here. Um, all these, every single one of them got slightly damaged. So we'll see how it does. I'm not sure. I mean, it's Texas. We don't, we don't get frost in the winter. It's really the only time to grow these kind of plants because the rest of the year, it's just too hot and they bolt on you. But we did have a little cold snap come through and it got down to 16 degrees. So that's, that's pretty cold, but I would have thought the broccoli would have handled it. I mean, they, I did bring them in and actually the only temperature they, they actually saw while outside was 26, I want to say 26 degrees. Cause I brought them inside the seedlings the next night, which got down even colder. So once I noticed that they had a little bit of damage. And when I plant this, I'm using the, the mulch to kind of hold it up because these plants have, they're a little bit leggy. And I'm hoping that the mulch holds it up, but I don't want to cover them either. So you want to keep that, you know, the, the crown from a uh, crown showing, but the, you can definitely bury them a little bit if you've got long stems on them because they can handle that. Next are leeks. So how I got this set up is I got a row of leeks here and a row of leeks on that side. So I'm hoping that keeps the bugs from coming on here. So pop one of these out and I'll show you what I mean about the fact that they can be separated. The roots are very wiry and short. And you can see I separated that out. So now I've got, oh, there's a leak right in there. Now I can just plant that seedling backfill sort of make sure that this mulch doesn't completely cover it that's a really small one let's only get the nice good ones last but not least we need to water everything to make sure it all gets a good dose of water right in the beginning I mean we did just have rain yesterday so the ground is pretty moist but let's just ensure that they get plenty of water here. And this is gonna help start activate that fertilizer as well. So I'll bring you guys back in about a week once these establish, we'll see how they do. Well, finally, I've got a significant amount of growth here. So today is February 9th, and I had planted these January 25th. And it did take a while before they got situated. And I can see the difference between them now versus just even a couple days ago. They really started to grow. And I say that, but we still have two. This one and that one that have not really taken off. Uh, when I had first planted them, they were all about this size. And now they're really, you know, starting to grow. And you can see here with this cabbage, we've got 
plenty of true leaves now. Um, they're really taking off. This could be for two reasons why it took so long for them to really get situated. One, the roots need to be able to start sprawling out. And when they're first planted, they have a little bit of shock and it takes a while for them to get situated. That is true. However, I also have only put in the granule fertilizer and that granule fertilizer, it's organic stuff, it's great stuff, but it does take two weeks for that stuff to be able to be bioactive for the plants because it has to be broken down in the soil biome. So I believe that's finally starting to happen and I'm seeing some major growth explosion. So probably in the next week, these will each double most of them at least not the ones that are <laughs> not doing well but most of these will probably double in the next week i appreciate you guys coming along and watching if you like this kind of content please subscribe and hit that bell notification for future video updates also if you could hit the like button it would really help me and the channel out and i will see you on the next video now you guys try to escape the daily grind